G'day guys, how you going? Bo here from Chasing Dreams. Today, I wanna to talk to you about what you really need to conquer the old telegraph track so you can get out there, tick that one off your bucket list just like we did, and I've gotta tell you, it was the best thing we have ever done. Well, what are we waiting for? Let's get into this list so you too can get out there and chase that dream of doing the old telegraph track. So first of all, let's kick it off with navigation and communication. Straight away, you've got to go and look for this Cape York book. This turned out to be our Bible. We did not buy it before we actually hit the Cape, but we got it along the Cape. And let me tell you, I wish we had have brought it beforehand and studied it because there is just so much detail in there. It literally shows you the old telegraph track. It'll give you information about it as well, which is really handy, especially coming up to some of those creeks and little things like that. So just alone for the telegraph track, it has some really good information about the four wheel drive track, what you can expect and everything like that. So really, really worth getting, studying, especially if you're gonna get out there and tackle this track. This is something you are definitely gonna to wanna to grab. To follow on from that, we have the HEMA HX1. Unfortunately, this is a little bit outdated now and we can't do updates, but this also will just give you that information as you drive up to a certain section. Great bit of kit and you can like follow the journey along it as well and drop those little cookie crumbs so you know exactly where you've come from. We use this everywhere we go, so she's a great bit of kit. As we all know, the old telegraph track is a very remote place. You are not passing through towns or supplies or anything, right? And you can be hours away from help. Sometimes, I believe even days if they can't get the staff to get a helicopter or airplane out into that area. So what are you going to do to even advise people that you need assistance and need to get emergencies out there? A PLB, personal location beacon. We travel with this everywhere because it is as simple as setting up the aerial, pushing a couple of buttons and it's gonna be activated and emergency services are gonna know exactly where you are, ready to head in and do their job. These things can honestly save your life. We swear by it, not just for the old telegraph track, but if you are traveling in general, if you're gonna go on a hike or something like that, make sure you pack one of these in your bag as well. And that way you have always got emergency services at the touch of a button so you can get out if you need. Now, when you're on the tracks, what do you do to communicate with others? Well, I can't tell you about that here. So why have I brought you to the car? Because UHF. Everywhere we go, we travel with it. And on the old telegraph track, it is essential to have. If you're doing some of those drop-ins and things like that, you're gonna to wanna to communicate and hear what people are saying with a spotter to be able to know exactly what is going on. If you have the funds and things like that, I would honestly recommend taking a handheld one as well. So somebody who is a spotter can be outside and you can have clear communication that whole time. Obviously things like letting people go past. If you're in an emergency situation, again, you can try and dial this one in, try and see if there's anyone else on the track that can help you. It really is a bit of kit that I reckon you should not leave home without. It is the best thing since sliced bread. And if you've never used one, Trust me, once you get it and turn it on, you'll find out exactly why it is so handy when you just listen to it. Roger, over and out. All right, along the track, you're gonna probably find yourself in a few sticky little situations. How are we gonna get out of them? Whether you are on your own or you're in a group, you're gonna want recovery gear. It is guaranteed that at some point, you're at least just gonna have it there for that extra little bit of peace of mind as you do something. So let's get into it. What recovery gear did we take and do we reckon you must take on your adventure? Straight off the bat, a snatch strap, okay? We were very fortunate enough that we got through most bog holes on our own. But in the end, you'll see when we went through Nolan's that most people connected a snatch strap straight onto the front of their car, had it coiled up, ready to go. So then if anything was to happen, people just run in, grab the snatch strap, connect it to the car in front, pull you out and you're in there for just a few moments. You will note that we did uh, opt to use our winch over the snatch strap, but we probably should have just chucked this on. It would have been so much quicker. The whole team was there ready to help anyway, but thankfully we got through without a drama. But that is gonna come in so handy in so many situations out there. There are so many different little bog holes that you're gonna be passing through and water crossings to go through. So to have something like that there ready to go is just what you need. One thing, that we also seen on the old telegraph track. This isn't about trying to teach you how to do a recovery, sorry. So if you've never done one before, definitely go and suss them out because you'll want to know how to do it before you get there. Do not attach a snatch strap or anything to a tow ball. 
that will then make that a flying missile. There are multiple deaths that have happened because of it. So make sure you are attaching it to rated gear and rated recovery points because we do not want to see you out there just connecting this to something that is going to fly off and it could be the end of that trip. Now this one isn't exactly a necessity, okay? But if you are thinking about tackling the old telegraph track or most other tracks, to be honest, on your own, I think it is essential to grab yourself a winch. We have just gone a very basic one from BCF when it was on special, but it gets us out when we need it, thankfully. And it is a priceless bit of kit for where we've been stuck, to be honest with you. So definitely, if you're thinking about going on your own, make sure you grab this one and chuck on the vehicle beforehand. Good tip, make sure you give it a test before you actually head out there onto the track. That is gonna get you out of most situations for you. Good big kit to have. Okay, next in our bag of ropes to get us out of the is a winch extender. Unfortunately, you don't get to decide when you go down. So sometimes you're gonna need that little bit extra to get to that tree to get you out of the bog, all right? So I think this one's about 20 meters. Some people say you can't carry enough of these because of sometimes, as I said, you just can't choose where you get bogged. And sometimes you could be 100 meters away from the nearest point to get yourself out. Next on, tree trunk protector, all right? So all you gotta do, use me. <laughs> <laughs> connect it and you'll get yourself out but that's just going to protect the tree give you a little bit more leverage on it and get you out of that bog for you so self-explanatory all right wrap around tree connect everything up and that's how you're going to get out majority of the time when you're traveling on your own like us that's exactly how we get out of it so this is a must and the reason you would use one of these over your actual rope on the winch is because you don't want to get wear and tear on that, wrapping around the tree and that ripping and pulling, also cutting through the tree and wrecking the environment. So this gives you a bit more grip and you're going to look after your gear in the long run. A dampener. Do not be using your winch without it. All right, there is so much tension within that rope. And if it decides to let go, this will act as a dampener catch that rope so it's not coming back at you like a missile whether you're by yourself or in a group it's always max tracks to the rescue max tracks to the rescue yeah <laughs> these boards i've got to tell you are absolutely unreal for self-recovery like we have done multiple times and a lot of times off camera to be honest they are just the best bit of kit to be taken around to just get you out of the bog and on your way on the old telegraph track palm creek straight away we did our drop in went through the water beautifully but on that exit it was very very sloshed out from the rest of the people so we laid down all four of our max tracks created a road and in the end we got over 10 people up and onto the track which was absolutely phenomenal to be honest and multiple people that night said if we hadn't have done that they were not doing the track so i honestly rate these so highly whether you need to get yourself out of the bog whether you need to level your caravan or your car they are the handiest bit of kit you are probably going to take with you anywhere don't leave home without them make sure you grab that beautiful big orange board i want to take this time for a special thank you to everyone your generosity and support honestly it means the absolute world to us and you have changed our lives more than you'll ever know when we have our down days to reflect on those kind words and that generosity that is just incredible it is your hard-earned dollars that you wish to spend with us and that it just lights a fire in us and we can't thank you enough a special thank you to these guys down below who have recently supported us and a massive thank you to Overweight and Underpowered. You guys have been with us through this journey for quite a long time now and your support specifically is just unreal. You've changed our lives more than you'll ever know and just thank you doesn't seem enough. We love you guys, absolute bloody legends. So let's be honest, you're not making it to the track without some good tread. So just before we hit the tracks, we had to get our tires changed so we had that good tread so we had peace of mind making sure we we're going to get through every obstacle that was thrown at us along there another thing to be checking is your sidewall you are definitely going to want to make sure you've got a few layers there because along that track are a lot of tree stumps cut down and there's a few rocky sections so you don't want to get a few surprises and end up with a stick in the side there and wrecking your day so good tread good sidewall 
good tyres are going to get you to the end. But in saying that, a good backup plan comes in twos. We've taken two spare tyres on this trip. We've always travelled with just the one, but we knew that we were heading remote and the chances of getting another one in that area are going to be very slim. So we decided to quickly purchase another second just before we got up there and give us that peace of mind. Thankfully, we didn't need to worry about anything like that. So we smooth sailing right the way through, but peace of mind is everything. All right, suspension and ground clearance. If you are anything like my missus, she will tell you two inches is not enough. But for this old girl, it'll get you through anything. So we were very, very fortunate that we didn't really get hung up on anything. At the rear end, we did hit a couple of times. So maybe she is right. Is two inches enough for you? Or do you just find that you have to push your way through it a lot of the time? Some of those water crossings are absolutely no joke. So it is essential if you're going to head up there and tackle it to grab yourself a snorkel. If you are still driving within a petrol vehicle, be sure to look at getting yourself a brush or a tarp to put over that front to keep all the water out of that engine bay. The wet seasons can get pretty serious up there and you never know how much water is seriously going to be laying around. So having a snorkel is just going to protect your gear and keep it away from that engine bay. Again, your diffs, gearbox, transfer case is all going to be underwater a lot of the time. So getting yourself some breathers is really going to help get them up out of the way, up in your engine bay as high as you can, and then that way you're going to be covered so water isn't going to be getting in there and wrecking that whole trip for you. So if you are unfortunate enough to get yourself in a bit of a pickle and get yourself a tyre puncture, having a repair kit, great way to go. These are super cheap and can get you out of trouble in no time. Might be a good idea to quickly watch a few videos before you head up there because key thing to note is there's no service. Once you get up there, you cannot watch a YouTube video on how to use it. So learn it before you head up and then you can get yourself out of the pickle. Or, fingers crossed, there's someone else on the track that can help you out. <laughs> Grip is also going to be essential. So being able to lower and pump back up your tyres is definitely something you are going to have to have on board. We just use our inflator to deflate them as well. We're using this one because we've found this one gives us the most accurate tire pressure reading. We are struggling with that at the moment, but hopefully this one's doing the job at the minute. So fingers crossed, keeps working for us, but you're gonna need one of them. And then tire inflation, something you should be traveling with no matter what anyway. Am I recommending this brand? Not really, it works, but it is super slow. Every time we turn it on though, it does work, does do its job. So I can't really complain, but I think there's better on the market. As always, car maintenance is absolutely important. So before we headed off on the track, we did a full service over everything. And on the way back, we also went right through everything and did another service just to make sure she ticks along beautifully and we didn't get any water and stuff like that inside any of the oils. We also, at that time, took it to go right underneath, tighten up any loose bolts, check all the suspension, check anything that is bolted onto this car to make sure it is completely tied down, bolted on, and stuck ready to go and conquer that whole track without any issues. So make sure you do some car maintenance. Make sure you check over it because that is going to prevent anything happening. As you probably know by now, I am not a handyman, but I 100% recommend carrying a tool kit. The chances of something going wrong and hopefully bumping into somebody who knows what they're doing along that track is quite high. So make sure you've got the tools so at least someone can help you. I recommend that whether you are traveling or just doing this track, a good tool kit will get you out of trouble. Spare parts. All right, again, I am not mechanically minded. So what I 100% recommend you do is contact a mechanic that you trust and maybe they can give you a few pointers of what you should be taking along the way. But straight away, I'd recommend an air filter and a fuel filter. I'm sure there's gonna be plenty more things you should be taking, but this is all I've currently got on me. Make sure you take these with you because that should get you out of a bit of a trouble. And again, just head to a local mechanic, find out what they recommend you to take and maybe find out what things might go wrong with your car on the track. All right, comfort and essentials. Straight off the bat is a good first aid kit. Unfortunately, we at the moment for our actual first aid kit use like this tool roll, which is great and we've got everything like stored away, but it's not listed or anything. So if we have people come and try and help us out, one, they might not know what they're looking for. Two, 
they've got to go through every single pouch to try and find what they're actually looking for. Where on the other hand, we also think it's essential to travel with a snake kit. And this brand here in particular, you open it up, everything's already listed, super easy to use and learn. So anyone who is looking at this kit can just read what it exactly is because it's all listed and then they're gonna be able to assist in any situation. A lot of people crack under pressure and you just wanna make things as simple as possible. So having it all listed like that would be ideal and something that we probably need to change in the future. But having those two kits, I think is absolutely essential, especially, again, you are super remote out there. Sometimes it's hours, days, until you're gonna get help. So make sure you got it. Now we are gonna revolve more around your camping setup and the vehicle setup just so it's a little bit more comfortable for you on the tracks. We found a lot of people overlooked this and didn't realize how beautiful it was along the old Telegraph track. And we'll say traveling with their caravan, the likes, and would leave it set up somewhere and then drive back every night for it. But I honestly, hands down, recommend you grabbing a rooftop tent or taking a swag because it is going to let you appreciate that track so much more. I know so many people that have regretted not having that now or next time are gonna tackle it with it because you can camp along those beautiful riverbeds. Some of the best camping you are gonna find is right along that track. So ensure that you look for sleeping quarters where you can park it there rather than leaving your caravan and having to go back there every night. Trust me, you won't regret doing it. Now that I've convinced you to stay a few nights along the track and enjoy it for what it is, the only way to celebrate as well is to take a few cold beers. So a fridge is gonna be imperative that you can go out there and enjoy those nights, now mingle with all those people that you've met, share the war stories of the day of how you hit a few things and just created all these memories. The downsides, you are obviously gonna to have to buy a power system to run it. If that is not within your budget, an Esky is certainly gonna do the trick for you, but just remember that ice is certainly gonna be hard to come across. And we didn't honestly buy any because we didn't need it because we've got the fridge. So I don't actually know where stocked it and didn't stock it, but I'm sure in certain areas they would but be prepared to be about five days without any ice to replenish what you've got in your esky. But honestly, there is no reward like a nice cold beer at the end of that telegraph track, or maybe you opted to do gunshot for yourself. You gotta treat yourself, mate. That was an awesome achievement. <laughs> so whilst you're out there on the tracks, you are gonna to wanna to be able to take all your rubbish. You should already have an area for this guaranteed whenever you're traveling or camping. But up there, you have no way of disposing of your rubbish. You are gonna to have to take that with you all the way up until you get across that ferry. So we opted to take two. We've always traveled with this one. Unfortunately, these are custom made and we wouldn't be able to get it in time before we headed onto the tracks. So we opted to take the crash pad as well. I've never actually said this before, but to me, I think it's absolutely disgusting watching people leave all their stuff around a campsite. And that is why we're getting closed down in a lot of places. A track like that, I want generations to be able to head up there and still enjoy it. While so many things are already closing down in this country, I would love to keep something like that open. So do the right thing, grab yourself some of these, get every bit of rubbish you can out of there, and let's keep them open for as long as we can. Before you start the track, you are definitely gonna to wanna to stock up on water and food. You might not be thinking that you're gonna need it. You're just gonna get through in one day. But what if something happens? There are a number of scenarios of things that can happen and you might find yourself having to camp up the night and needing that extra food and water. It is super remote, as we've said plenty of times in this video, and getting help is not gonna happen quickly. So make sure you are self-sufficient in that regard and can help yourself. There are a lot of places where you can pull up to a swimming hole, have a swim and cool off and get your body temperature down. But it is still pretty warm up there. You are gonna to wanna to hydrate and have something to eat, especially if you're a big bloke like me. I did wanna also quickly touch on, it is not 100% essential, but just note when you're out on that track, there is no service right the way along it. 
So you might want to consider Starlink because you are going to be able to connect to anyone at any time by plugging it into your car. We were fortunate enough to travel with it. A couple of people needed it to find out if they could order parts and the likes for that because they were stuck at Nolan's or different tracks where things had broken and they just need to know where their parts were. It was great to be able to connect with everyone and still have that service and have that peace of mind that if something was to go wrong, we would be able to just connect that get it up to the sky and that is also like our satellite communication if anything was to go wrong we could be in contact with emergency services again 100 percent not essential but something that can be a great bit of kit when traveling up that way now 100 percent to finish this off right there is no road trip complete without good tunes and a positive attitude i think if you head in there with that you are going to have the best time of your life and make memories that you wouldn't even think of we have met so many wonderful people on that track and created the most remarkable memories. This trip completely excelled our expectations. We had the best time ever. And let me tell you, it was super scary taking our home on wheels down that track, but I would turn around and do it again today with a good set of crew pointing you in the right direction. You'll get through unscathed. Don't be afraid to take those chicken tracks like we did and just get through it and just create memories that will last a lifetime. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope this has helped you in planning your trip up the Cape and tackling the old Telegraph track. Remember the five Ps, prior preparation prevents piss poor performance and safety in a remote location like that is 100% necessary so you can get out there and enjoy it. This is a trip of a lifetime and honestly, you've still got to make your way up to the tip, tick it off and enjoy this incredible for area for what it is. If you think I've missed something and there is things that people should be taking along the old Telegraph track trip, please leave them in the comments below. Create that community where everybody can read and gather that information so they can be 100% prepared to get out there and tackle that track because we want everyone to get out there and enjoy it as best they can. In the next episode, we are going to be heading to the tip of Australia for ourselves. So please stick around next week. We'll catch you then. You are an absolute bloody legend. Your support means the absolute world to us. See you next week. Once you're in strife and there's no one around to help, you're going to want to open this one up and I've never had to use it. <laughs> Handy tip, read the instructions before you head out. You've got to flick this out. Yeah, like that. And then that goes up. Because there is just so much detail in there. We travel with four because we've got four wheels, so. <laughs> Nervous as a bag of cats at a greyhound meet, mate. Test it before you actually hit on the, hit on. Good suspension and a few inches is gonna get you a long way, trust me. <laughs> so maybe she is right. Bigger could be better. <laughs> uh, what you probably, probably. <laughs> <laughs> you open it up and everything's already listed i've gone the wrong way <laughs> just to make sure that we keep this girl running tight we got to do some pelvic thrusts whilst we did this <laughs> case closed <laughs>